welcome to the Sabre Show Live, where we control our own narratives and talk about the topics that we need to talk about. So if you would take a moment right now to like and share this. So today, one of the first things we want to talk about is Christmas. Everybody knows today is Christmas. I hope you guys enjoyed your day. Um, I personally don't celebrate it, but don't have anything against anyone who does. But um, yeah, let's talk about what did you do today for Christmas? Today for Christmas, I watched Chloe open her gifts. Chloe is my three-year-old daughter, guys. And um, I got a special gift from a special friend. And thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You know, mm -hmm. love, love, love. And that's basically it. What about you? Well, today for me, it was kind of like a regular day. I really don't celebrate Christmas anymore. Um, in my life now, uh, I guess my next level of consciousness and it's not like something I had to try hard to do. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I just really want to sacrifice and not do Christmas. It was just like, I'm not even excited about it anymore. It, does not, it doesn't do anything for me. It's the way America celebrates it. Don't get me wrong. Because of my religious beliefs, I can consider myself a Christian. But I recognize, you know, the gift that God gave us, which was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the gifts represent that and so on and so forth. But the way... America has Americanized it, you know, with the Santa and the lights and Capitalized the elves it, and, the, yeah. and the shopping and, you know, all that stuff. And black people have the least amount of wealth, but we're the most uh, consumers, especially during this type of year, this time of year. I can't get down with it. And then, then to, you know, the white man and, you know, make it, the white man's going to come down your chimney and uh, give you gifts as That's long as you're good all year. That's what about it, too. I can't get with it. I mean, yeah. personally, I just can't. So we kind of just celebrated my daughter's birthday yesterday. Um, and that's what, that's pretty much what we did. We don't really celebrate Christmas the way and, America does. And it's crazy because we really don't know when Jesus Christ was born. Yeah. We just, it's an <laughs> estimated date. Yeah, but that, that's neither here nor there for me because mm -hmm. it really, it doesn't matter. You know, we could celebrate it. He could be born in, you know, June or whatever, <laughs> but if you if we because no none of us were here to see it and there's no some say there's no real major evidence to prove it. So even if we pick December twenty fifth as the time to recognize it, then okay that's fine we can recognize it on that day. But the way America uh, recognizes Christmas, it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And not to mention, I don't want to raise my daughter to to think that some white man is going to. Um, bring her gifts as long as she's good all year. She has to sit on a white man's lap and he's just going to come to her house and bring her that gifts. That is true. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. I and mean, I, I mean, and that's, I mean, I have never thought about it like that. I just know that, you know, I've, I figured it out when I got older that mm -hmm. it wasn't a Santa Claus, you know, but I still want that tradition with her, you know, yeah. drink hot cocoa, put out the cookies, you know, but I also think that individuals should take the time out to go to like homeless shelters and things like that during this time mm -hmm. of the year and give back to the community. Mm -hmm. Even though that's not going to do a whole lot, but well, just a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. You know, it's just counts. like recycling. Yeah. You know, your one bottle isn't going to save the world, but all of our one bottles can mm -hmm. help save the world exactly. or whatever. Exactly. So that's how I feel about it. So as she gets older, I'm going to capitalize more mm -hmm. and trying to do things outside of just gifts and giving. And, right. You know. I mean, it's all good. I don't have anything against people who do it because I know it's traditional. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people love tradition, and that's okay. That's the main thing what I do it for, is just tradition. Right. But for just me, I maybe people look at me I'm a little extreme sometimes, no, too. No, someone told me Happy Hanukkah. So, yeah, yeah. I was like, you're, you're not Jewish. They were trying to be funny, and it wasn't funny. No, but he literally was serious. Well, he, well... We're not going to get into anyway, that, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just not for me and our family right now. We just, I look at tradition in all aspects of it, whether it's Christmas or something else, something else or, or voting or whatever. If it has been go gone on for however much long and it's just been passed down from generation and it doesn't work and it's not useful or meaningful, why do it? Yeah. So I treat all of it the same. That's so that's the only reason why I don't. But if you do, and that's the tradition. That's your tradition with your family and your children. By all means, you know, knock yourself out. Yep. 
Just so, yeah, next, um, Courtney St. John has some yin, Y-E-N, entertainment news. And so yeah, she's yeah, going to bring yeah. us some stories so, for us to weigh in. So let us know. Yeah. My name is Courtney St. John. I'm here with Yin Young Entertainment News. And we're giving you all the hottest topics and political information that you need to know to get you through the week. So, we're going to start off in politics like always. I'll switch it up every now and then. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so First Lady Michelle Obama spoke with Oprah over the week. Mm -hmm. I did see that. I saw that. Yes, it was on CBS on Monday. It it aired around like 8 o'clock. And so, basically, she spoke to her on the legacy that they're leaving in the White House on hope. Let's watch a clip of that. See, now we're feeling what not having hope feels like. If you, what else do you have if you don't have hope? Yeah. So, um, what do you think about that? I think that off the top, it was a bunch of BS because really? in this country, yes, yes, do absolutely, tell, do tell. absolutely. This country, as far as far as black people, because y'all know that I'm gonna put black people first in my life because I'm black. So just like every other group puts their group first, I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing. But as for black people, she's basically saying that. Uh, we didn't give you anything tangible. We didn't give you anything that um, can be of use for you and your family to actually do better. But what we did was give you hope. Something a little fairy dust in the air that you can't use, can't see, can't feel. It, we gave you hope, though. <laughs> and then without hope, what are you going to do? And my, think, my, my take on that is we're going to do the same thing that we did without hope, which is suffer economically, politically, and um, lack of for, for lack of resources, and um, and racism in this country. And while hope can pacify us, it's not going to change anything for us. It is just going to give us something intangible. And so, if you're basing the legacy of your presidency on something we can't see as black people, as black people, because he was a good president and minorities for the, for the country, as well, but. We're gonna get black into people that. is a separate yeah, yeah, thing category, but um, as as long as that that we didn't get anything tangible that we can see, feel, or actually do something with, other than to have a black face in the White House, um, we just got hope. And so now that our hope is taken away from us, oh, we're supposed to be distraught, and really nothing's gonna change, um, as far as that because you can't do or do or uh, do anything with hope. Right. I mean the interview was interesting just because she speaks on a lot of things and she she speaks on um just the aspect of hope in the nation mm -hmm. she goes on to you know in the interview and we'll show a clip of this part too when you were labeled that angry black woman was that one of the things that knocked you back well a that bit? was one of those things that you just sort of think dang you don't even know me yeah you know i mean you just sort of feel like wow well, where'd that come from yeah you know, in that part of the interview, she's explaining on she's asking Michelle Obama how um, she feels like being an angry black woman really basically. How does she change the notion of people seeing her in that aspect? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. You know, they're always going to have negative connotations behind being black wherever you are, especially around a lot of white people or in this country. We're always perceived as the angry black woman or the angry black man. And that's why we kind of have to watch, you know, how we carry things just because... Which is uh, we, very sad. Yeah, but black people, we're, we are emotional because of all of the torment and everything that we've been through mm -hmm. for, for the last hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So we are more sensitive than other groups, but we have to know how to kind of not let them see us sweat. Yeah. But at the same time, a lot of times it doesn't matter what we do. And we're still Even labeled. if we're like, huh, or what? Like you said, why did you say that about me? They're like, oh, calm down. Calm down, you know, Shaniqua. Just putting a, you know right? what I'm saying? Like, don't get all <laughs> up in it. Your like, name is this Shaniqua. My I name is Courtney. Right. They're like, calm down, Courtney. And you're like, what did I, I didn't even say nothing. I just asked, why'd you do that? So we're going to always have that about us, um, that negative connotation on us. And I mean, it's kind of no getting around that a little bit, but I understand where Michelle Obama's coming from because she was kind of sometimes perceived as an angry black woman and I've never seen her be an angry black woman. All right. So that was with politics, guys. And so right. we're going on now to social media related topics. One thing that was big is, Kid Cudi's album released on December 16th. I heard the album. What was your it thoughts? Was, it was really dark. If you if you love Kid Cudi, I love Kid Cudi too. But it was like, we all know that he's going through a different, a difficult, like, depression time right now. And I mean, 
it was just too dark for me. Yeah. I'm not depressed. Yeah. And but even if know, I it was depressed, I don't want to hear a dark album. Yeah, I mean, but what was interesting was he had a lot of artists on there. That That's true. Andre 3000. Yes. And Willow Smith, which yes. they did an amazing song together on there. Yeah. I really like that song. Um, uh, uh, Travis Scott did a song with him on there. So yeah. a lot of artists kind of connected with him with this album. So, yeah. I, you know, I kind of think back and I'm like, if you think about all the artists that he collaborated with, uh-huh. these artists are just as weird as him. You know, yeah, in certain and, and aspects. They, and they, so. they like, like him a lot. Like, yeah. I know Travis Scott was saying that Kid Cudi was his favorite artist. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah it, it works. Yeah. It works. So, I think that, you know, it, it kind of, it leveled out. I mean, certain songs in there, I'm just like, whoa, next. Yeah, like the whoa, music was just next. a little bit dark. But, I mean. Um, Did you like his last album? Which one, which title was There's that? The Rock album he did. I don't remember. I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember. I'm, I'm not I'm a big Kid like Cudi this. fan, but yeah. I mean, I just know he did a rock album that was really good. Well, was, I don't listen to rock, so I probably, I probably, yeah, I'm not, I definitely didn't hear it. You, so probably, yeah, I don't listen to rock. Just like when Wayne had his rock album, and I loved Lil Wayne at that time, but I wasn't gonna listen to a rock album, it. period. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. But um, um, yeah, it was it was dark. And some of you might enjoy it because maybe not all the songs were dark to y'all, but the music itself, what he was saying, it just kind of was like, yeah, I can't really vibe with it, but I hope it did. I hope it was successful with his um, audience. Yeah. I mean, like his fans were really impressed. Good. I think that's fan what base, Yeah, his fan base were really impressed. He got a lot of good reviews. Other than J. Cole's album, it was like kind of a different, you know, mixture. Yeah. Because J. Cole's fans were just definitely weren't impressed. I mean, a lot oh, of them yeah. were okay. kind of disappointed, yeah. but his fan base was, you know, they were kind of sure. impressed. So going on to the last story that I have from coming from Yen, AME changes. I don't know if you all heard of this story. And I yes, know spoke on it I earlier. definitely saw this come out. So AME changes the name of the up and coming KKK documentary, but it was. It, it wasn't changed because of the backlash that was received. It was because the participants in the documentary were paid. They were paid, and they, they were usually paid. aren't. Um, yeah, they're, I mean, basically, the uh, AME said that they're not supposed to be paid. So they're doing some investigation on that. So, I mean, that's basically... The show was supposed to air on, December, on January 10th, mm-hmm. but now it's not going to air. It was called Escaping the KK at K- escaping the kkk and so i don't know how you know you feel about that me personally i don't even understand why we have a documentary coming out for these individuals that are just known for hating other mm-hmm. nationalities other people they're a different. terrorist group they're and, definitely a and terrorist they group. have they were going to just promote them on this show like yeah. it was just nothing these people kill individuals they burn churches Based they on burn race. They burn crosses, and you're going to give them a documentary. I just feel like it's just demeaning to everyone in America, just like the election. Well, (laughs) My opinion on it, but yeah. Well, I think this was a test run to see how this type of thing would be uh, perceived, how this idea would be perceived. I think it was a test run to see if people are open to normalize this kind of terrorism, this domestic terrorism. Everybody knows about the KKK and how awful they are. Um, for America, but specifically more so for black people um, and the attack they've had on black people since the beginning Mm -hmm. of the KKK. And for them to have a show, that's just like America giving a show to ISIS or Mm -hmm. America giving a show to... It's like, and then how could you give a show to a terrorist group? But then they they are literally a terrorist group. But then you then you call Black Lives Matter a terrorist group, and they don't kill people and hang people and lynch people, you know. And, and, and I'm not saying I'm not a part of I'm I'm not a part of Black Lives Matter. By the way, I'm just saying this is how they talk about other um, other groups who are doing something uh, to fight for injustice, and they comparing them to a terrorist, a domestic terrorist group like the KKK. Now, I mean, I just. Um, it doesn't surprise me, and I wouldn't be surprised if they canceled it for something else and just put it out there as, oh, we're canceling it because some people were wrongfully paid yeah. and things like mm-hmm. that. I think it was a test run to see how people gravitate towards it. I think people weren't feeling it, and um, they didn't want to risk people boycotting their station, their um, their channel, the A&E channel. What do you expect? I still wouldn't watch A and E just for the thought that they almost put out a, a KKK 
documentary series. I mean, I do like AME and in, 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 um, in Halloween time. Yeah, but... The, the retro movies. That's but, enough I mean, leader. after this, like, yeah. you just totally just lose my subscription. And they should lose yours, too, because they these are people who kill people who look like you just off of the strip of looking like you if you're black. And um, and don't they even know never, you, right? And they shouldn't get a show. They're they're a terrorist organization. They should not get a show. They've been fueled because of this Donald Trump election. Because you have now you have people like the alt right, who's so pretty much just a branch of the KKK, mm-hmm. and um, now they're being uh, glorified and trying to become normalized. And we have to stand for something. We can't have that. So A and E, you just definitely lost some viewers. Deuces. Well, that's all I have today with Yen. Um, tune Thank in you later. For that. Yeah, tune in later. I'll be doing some more um, viral videos and things like that. So. Thank you for that. But those are some good stories from Yay. Young Entertainment News. So the topic I want to talk about today was those police officers interacting with those black women in Fort uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I posted on my YouTube channel a couple days ago of the whole incident in its entirety. It was a long video. It was 30 minutes. But I posted that one on purpose because a lot of times people defend, when they defend police officers with these type of altercations, they always say, oh, you know, you didn't get the beginning part. You don't know what happened up into the part of the confrontation. You don't know what happened before the cop shot him. You don't know what type of attack that that cop was in before. And I'm not talking about police officers as a whole because there's a difference between a race soldier and a police officer. This was just a race soldier who happens to have a badge and gun. So let's be clear, this is a race soldier, not a police officer, because as Brother Tariq Nasheed says, nowhere in the police handbook does it say to target people based on race and arrest them and harm them. There, everyone, if you've seen the video, you saw that um, a lady uh, called the police, and um, she called the police because a neighbor, a white neighbor, choked her and attacked her son, her seven-year-old son, and he said he did it because her son littered. And it was totally uncalled for. She did the right thing. She called the police, thinking that she was going to get justice for her son being attacked by a stranger. Um, her seven-year-old baby was attacked by a stranger who was white. And um, she called the police to get justice for that. The police officer came. He was very arrogant. And he said, um, but why didn't you teach your child not to litter? And then he was just like, so? So what? Dismissing her. Like, why can't he choke your son? And it was kind of like provoking her to act a fool, but she didn't act a fool. She, of course, she was hysterical. She was yelling. She was raising her voice, but she wasn't disrespecting him. Then one thing led to another. Her daughter, seemed like a teenage or a young adult age, um, came to, you know, kind of, you know, hold the mother back. Not that she was attacking the cop, but just to kind of, like, calm her mom down and say, you know, mom, it's okay. Just, mm, her emotions you know, were raging her emotions, so much. Right, yeah. and she was trying to help her mom out. Mm-hmm. So the police grabs her, slams her on the ground, and then has a gun to her back, and then waves the gun to the rest of her family. Hey, hey, don't you tell we are on live. Don't, don't grab her. 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 And said, you know, and the goat proceeds to arrest her, then arrests the daughter, and then later on arrests the other daughter who was actually recording. And the girl who was recording was super smart because she got everything. And I'm so glad she did. But you know, do you know after that incident, the police officer, the race soldier, posed as the police officer, only got put on limited duty. He didn't get fired, he didn't get leave with pay, leave without pay. He still wakes up every morning and puts on a gun and badge. Not surprising. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous at this point. And us as black women, we have to know that we aren't exempt from the system of white supremacy. We have to know that they aren't just attacking our men. They're attacking us too. As you see with Sandra Bland, as you see with Corinne Gaines in Baltimore, you know, they aren't playing any games. And that's why we have to get ourselves up so we don't... um, we are so subject to the system and we have to work on um, replacing the system of white supremacy with justice. It's yeah. moving from white supremacy to white supremacy Nazi system mm-hmm. because there's no way in the world should should uh, you be calling the police and you're the one who ended up with a gun at your back. I think it's different now too because we have social media and we have right. um, 
we have our phones and things like that. But back in like the 70s, the yeah. 80s, you know, back then, they didn't have that form of media. Right. So now it gets out so fast. And, you know, like you said before, it's normalized. Right. You know, so now it's like it was brought to atten- it was brought to everyone's attention with Sandra Bland, with all these individuals that went through these altercations with police officers. But now I feel like individuals have normalized it. And, you know, people have shunned it and put it to the side and oh okay that happened mm-hmm. oh that's just gonna happen it's nothing i can do to change it's nothing that my family can do to change it. i'm just gonna keep living my life oh let me kind of hide from it you know let me ignore it but right. you can't do that you know you, you you really can't you know like if it takes for you to just share the video to show your friends of what's right. really going on because some people don't see it so and some people believe that racism doesn't even exist we can't forget about these instances like after a major holiday where people, the, I'm sure mainstream media will be like, oh, you know, we, oh, it's Christmas now. People probably forget about it. But no, we have to show that we don't have a short attention span like that when it comes to the livelihood of our people. Right. And we have to stay on it regardless if it's Christmas, Thanksgiving or whatever. We have to stay on it because if a, if a person that can, can hem up your seven-year-old child and get away with it like it's nothing. That and just because they're white and your son or your daughter is black, that's a real problem. Because not only are they getting the black women and the black men, they are attacking our babies, and we can't have that. No, and then we can't have that. And it's like I think again, too, individuals feel like, what can I do about it? You know, like and or either people feel like, what can I do about it? Is nothing I can do about it, or either they feel like that has nothing to do with me. You know what? It has everything to do with us, especially if you have children. Well, if you're an adult, in this situation, you're if you're an adult. Not even if, if you, you just don't children, have children. What about your black, cousins? If you're black, it has something to do with it because at any given time, it could be that, that same person could be us. If somebody hits up my daughter and she's seven, I'm going to be hysterical too. Does that mean I deserve to get a gun in my back? Yeah. No. With it slammed on the ground like a dog? If you, I'm going to play another clip of it. But um, if you see it, 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 it just it makes me it made me sad. It was like it it was really like it, it was a helpless feeling. Like I'm pretty sure like and, and he, he embarrassed them in front of their all the neighborhood and their family. And then the Who guy was just their standing mother? there, right? You know, the they, guy that did choke his son up was just right, standing there. Right, the actual criminal. The actual criminal who assaulted her son is just standing there witnessing everything. And they're, you they're know, feeling they're, powerful. <laughs> right. Just taking in all that power and just like, yeah, I'm white. Yeah, right. I choked your son. But look, you're the one that got a gun to your back. Exactly, because How we're in a system you? of white supremacy. I mean, and this is America. You, mm-hmm. Individuals risk their lives to come over here on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. One of the major things that we can do... It, uh, to help kind of prevent these things is one, not to let it go when it happens and then, oh, something else in the news happens or, oh, it's a holiday. We can't let these things go. We have to um, vote in our the people who are, who are going to be running the court systems. We have to... Um, we have to make sure we have a hand in voting those local people in and make sure we're vet- vetting those black leaders who will come into the political situation, in the, in the political sense that can help fight for our justice. And another thing, we have to work on our media because mainstream media isn't covering this anymore. Um, we have to have black owned media such as this. Make sure we're sharing, make sure we're liking it, make sure mm-hmm. we're subscribing to it so we can get the word out more and more and more. That way, when mainstream media stops, uh, uh, reporting on it, we don't stop caring about it. And another thing is getting our economy together. We have to start businesses because that's the only way. People are like, well, what does business have to do with this? But that's how you get uh, the having an economic basis. How you have political clout. Mm-hmm. You think that the the politics runs off of you know what's right and what's wrong, or you know who votes the most? No, it's running off of money. So if we have money in these people's pockets. We can get things done just like the Asians do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then today it was so funny. Like I said earlier, I went to my sister's brunch at her house, mm-hmm. and we were just sharing conversation with each other. And she was telling me how um, her son, my well, my my nephew, 
I said I gave him some money for Christmas, mm-hmm. and she was saying how um, she knows some of his friends at his school, their parents give them stocks. Yes. They invest in their in stocks for their yes. children. at a young age. And I was like, wow, not even a savings account, but stocks. You yes. Know? So that's a good mindset to think about. And so, yeah. I mean, people know, say so... that if you're like, oh, everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. And I understand that. I've been an entrepreneur is a lot of work. But if you don't, if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you have to invest in an entrepreneur because we, you can't just let your money sit. Yeah. And with that, what your, um, what your sister was saying about the kids at her school, that's so smart. It's so good. Like that's what, when people was like, Oh, what can I get Riley for her birthday? Which is my daughter. What can I get your daughter for her birthday? I said, if you're undecided, either get her a savings bond or a gift card for the stock market because Right after her birthday, which is now, I will be starting her in an investment account. It's not like a get-rich-quick thing. It's definitely a marathon. So when she, I'll invest every month until she's 25 or 30, whichever, and um, it will grow. And you diversify. You don't, have, you don't do just one, you don't invest in one thing. Of course, you diversify. And over the course of years, she can have a quarter million to a half a million dollars. That's how the stock market works. Mm-hmm. And you have to prepare your children for that, but you have to prepare your families for that also. We may not see it in our generation, but it's for the next generation to benefit. So in the next 30, 40, or 50 years, we can have political clout. So our great-grandchildren, our grandchildren won't still be getting, you know, shot down in the street or hemmed up in the streets just for being black like they are today. If we, if our grandchildren are in the same predicament that we are in right now, we fail. It doesn't matter what we did in our life. If they're suffering the way we are, we failed. And we can't do that. Our parents have done it. Our grandparents have done it. We cannot do that for ours. Now, what do you think about starting like a small revolution? Well, we are. Within, within the black community, that's not what Black Lives Matter is standing for. But how can how do you think the individuals can do it within their home? Within your home? you can Within speak. your family, within your home your community, how can you do it? First things first is teach your children and yourself our history. There are a number of books, that, and I'm talking about beyond slavery, and the history that they won't tell us in our school books because, of course, they're not going to tell us all our history. Mm-hmm. Teach us our hist- your children your and yourself, your family, our history. There are documentaries called like Hidden Colors, that really break it down. If you don't want to read a ton of books, Hidden Colors is like a hundred books in one, and it's four series. And watching those and reading other books that you that you get cause from the uh, Hidden Colors document because they do give you um, books that they've got their sources and stuff from. Um, that's that's number one. That's number one. You have to know your history, or else you're not gonna have pride in yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're looking at yourself sure. the way that America is looking at you, you're not even gonna love yourself. You understand what I mean? Like you're not going you to lose yourself if you if you're looking at if you're looking at yourself the way America tells you to look at yourself, you will not like yourself. You will see that there, you'll look at yourself like, oh, me being black is is ugly. Uh, because I'm black, I'm not as smart. Because I'm black, I can't. I'm not as good. If you're looking at yourself the way America will is is telling you to look at yourself, that's why you have to find your own history, which is from hidden colors documentaries and things like that, to really know who you are as a people. The next thing is the finance. You can hit up the uh, either the Black Business School or what is it called? Uh, black Financial Literacy. If you go on blackfinancialliteracy.com, he even has a class coming up in January on how to invest in the stock market. He like lays it all down. He has a PhD in finance. His, uh, his, his PhD, I mean, uh, he has a dissertation in his PhD about the stock market. So he's an expert in the stock market. You can learn from him. Um, there's many things that you can do. That's the finance part. And then after that, we can talk about getting more political clout and, um, having money to punish people who do things against us and reward people who do things for us. You know, people that stand up for us like Colin Kaepernick or something like that. We should, if something happens where the NFL doesn't want him anymore or they say he's too controversial, you know, they can, they can just kind of like throw him to the wayside. We as a community can make sure he's good. His family is good because you know what? You stood up for us, so we're going to help you out. We're going to make sure you're straight. Or anybody who puts their career on the line for the sake of us. Because they're a lot. So, so yeah, things like that. So, I I definitely think our history first, finance is second, the political part third. And that's my personal um, 
take on where we can do it and everybody can do something. Everybody can do something. So don't feel like uh, you can't listen to people like Boyce Watkins, Umar Johnson, Tariq Nashi. Umar is so good. Yes. So there's so many there's so many things that you can do. So, so that is it for today for the Sabre Show Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you are sharing, liking, and subscribing this page. We need black media in order to, you know, control our own narratives. We cannot trust Fox News to uh, start jumpstart our revolution. They're not going to do it. Dude, that's just like being a football, asking your opponent to help you learn how to win the game. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Well, what's your place? So right. we will see you guys next week at 7 p.m.